Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer a 40k Rogue Trader. Uh, my name is Saiken and this is the uh, blind playthrough on Unfair Plus. A difficulty Unfair Plus because it is a bit more difficult than Unfair normally uh, would be. I cramped everything up to the maximum. But you know that by now I don't think that anyone uh, tunes in in episode 80 and uh, feels like not knowing what the deal is. We cannot chart any travel points uh, there, so the idea of uh, traveling directly there is unfortunately uh, not possible. Good. Let's take a look what else we can find. The only way to go through the uh, fog, um, the cosmic cloud, seems to be to use the um, the portal that we have found, which makes sense. But then again, someone would have needed to fly through the clouds at some point in order to build the portal to then uh, use it at a, uh, as a, a bridge. Imperium oh my lord, awakens. what is happening? Well, I know what's happening. This is Drukhari stuff. Time to unleash a counterattack. Beautiful. Or not so beautiful because uh, that's a lot of enemies. Okay. Torpedoes now. I need all of the damage that I can get. And so it will be with anyone who stands in our way. Steer us to our target. Let the incandescent beams scorch our enemies. Okay, well, look, we're trying to fly as far away as possible. Destroyed two of the enemy ships. I think we're going to take a little bit more damage uh, once they are coming closer, but we're okay. We have split the force in uh, their force into several sections, three there. As long as we take them in small chunks, uh, the others uh, will be denied their action. And so far our sword class frigate is still working. Gotta get that uh, hatred f uh, frigate down ASAP. Well, that one as well. A lot of damage. But our shields are still holding. Okay. More damage. Unleash the storm of micro cannons. That explosion will damage the other one. Fantastic. That's what I was hoping would happen. Charter course. Let the incandescent beam scorch our enemies. Steer us to our target. Good. Two more down. You turn away, just so that we're not taking damage. And a big fat warp storm would be nice in a second. Oh. 
send their souls to the void. Emblazon our path. Good, now that its shield was down, <clears throat> there isn't much that it could have done. Turning that frigate around again. Supporting our shields further and... There we go. That's a lot of damage. I don't like it. Cool. Instantly killed that one. Unleash a wrath upon my enemies. Let the incandescent beams scorch our enemies. Let the Empyrean guide us. Scanning them. <coughs> Frontal shields. Matter of fact, restart the shields. And we're good. Them. Almost got them down. Hmm. Talking about a pretty uh, massive massacre that was like, what, uh, 10 ships? 4, 4, and 2? The Black Heart is here. What a surprising turn of events. Do you still wish to go to the rendezvous point? Almost certainly we are just getting started. I love it. Deception at its finest. So, uh, if we upgrade further, what can we need uh, do? Boarding party is cool. Internal damage on the enemy's uh, ships are good. Flagship's augurs scan the area for favorable tactical position. Uh, evasion increased 35%. That's also not bad. Might as well take both. And we're almost fully upgraded. Upgrading the ramming damage because we can't get more hit points apparently we are absolutely maximum upgraded what an interesting turn of events eh Good, we got ourselves another event here. Most of the surface is covered in icy dunes with greenish highlights. At first, officers aboard the vessel decide that the unusual color of uh, the ice is due to a quick uh, quirk of the atmosphere. Later, it becomes evident that the source of the highlights is a group of monstrous pyramidal structures wrenched in emerald fire. Uh, examining uh, it in more detail with uh, magnocolars, it can be seen that one of the monolith is damaged. A device on its wall emits an energy bleam, uh, beam at a similar pyramid not far away. Uh, structuring, uh, studying the structure, the Van Valencia scouts approach the monolith 
with as much care as possible, fearing the appearance of uh, an enemy. A small servitor uh, sent to gather data about the energy beam clearly demonstrates the destructive power of the Xeno technology. After carelessly making contact with the beam, it instantaneously broke apart into minuscule pieces. It is curious uh, that the second pillar is still intact and that uh, it's only a matter at the source of the beam being destroyed. A study the other monolith. The energy beam barely reflects off the dark uh, metal of the pyramid. Occasionally, a scarcely visible wave room, uh, runs across the surface of the monolith walls, after which uh, the material appears to become even smoother. It's one of the monolith that is feeding the other, uh, not destroying it. A few scouts decide to come closer in order to better examine the phenomenon. The soldiers uh, of Van Valencius noticed a fragment of a metallic ribcage melted into the material on one of the walls like a bizarre bas relief. Between the rows of ribs, a talisman of black stone shimmers with colored light after um, each wave of energy. The figure to which the talisman belongs shows no signs of life. After quick debate, the officers decide to take the artifact on board. Withering shard. Whereas strength and toughness and agility are decreased. The wearer can use heroic acts at uh, 125 momentum instead of 175 um, and desperate uh, at 50 um, higher. Okay, the wearer is considered as having a heretical ad um, the wearer is considered as having heretical adherent if they do not yet have it. Mm -hmm. Well, this hmm, could be an option to wear heretical stuff, but the heroic acts, I mean, they are okay, uh, but the 50 do not really make that much of a difference. We're getting enough uh, heroic power anyways, despite us having put it to the absolute lowest amount that it can theoretically be. Plat steel seven. Uh, do we have enough plat steel? Matter of fact, we don't. Might as well place that here. Not sure how we are bringing it home, but okay. We're going to the Necron ring in a second. Okay, there is a Drukari camp. Uh, we're going to that in a second. Let's do the Necron ring first. A greenish glow of a giant ring uh, made from unknown materials flows through the windows of the captain's bridge. The void ship's instrument measure uh, a whole spectrum of various emissions. Sometimes the dull green is darkened by clouds of space uh, dust or bent by gravitational waves. The object most closely resembles a portal, albeit what passing through cannot clearly define. Let's uh, send a team to observe it. Additional equipment and closer positioning allow the team to understand part of what is happening. The portal seems to resemble a gate device used uh, by the Aldarian Drukhari, only made of different material. The metallic shrine of the ring alternates uh, with the darkness of large blocks of stone, reminiscent of the material that makes up for the famous Cadian pylons. The pilot of the exploring vessel does not successfully escape a powerful wave of incandescent gas. Part of the team perishes as a result of the damage to their compartment and the vessel itself barely returns to the Van Valencius uh, flagship. Let's absorb it. Arcs of indescendent star gases uh, bursting from the ring pierces darkness of the space, reflecting the surface of other celestial bodies in the system at times. Uh, dark light waves bend the edges of the portal, but they are quickly restored thanks to the en enigmatic flowing metal. Then, lashes of purple clouds, uh, dissected by the threads of lightning, appear in the center of the ring. An unseen force prevents them from reaching the other side of the portal. Um, as uh, blocks of black stone become covered in purple scarlet illumination. Uh, if the ring truly were a portal, it is not fit to serve as one any longer. Stellar heat and gravitational force forbid any vessel from passing through. According to the ship's astropath, the purple clouds are an even more dangerous phenomenon, indicating that the powers of the warp are eager to, uh, to flow 
uh, out of the por uh, portal into real space as if to highlight its deadliness with the next wave of dark light the portal throws out shattered remains of an unidentified void ship it's hard to believe a uh, civilization capable of creating such devices as powerful as this could have undergone such a decline so wait we do have a void ship uh, here no okay in which case, let's go to the dead world, to the meeting place. And we have a decision to make. It's definitely time for team number two, because it is Marazai's quest. But the question is, are we taking Idira? Or do we take Incendia Corda uh, with us? Uh, I, Idira has the advantage that she definitely deals more damage. But uh, we're also having the the void peril problem hmm it's a good question i liked uh, incendia in so far as she could buff others and deal more damage and she was super fast her dash ability is really really good uh, in large maps she worked out very very well um hmm You know what, um, let's take Idira for one more and then we're just alternating between the two of uh, them. Uh, I want to see how we can deal with the perils of warp. Alright, so we landed. <coughs> let's see. This is going to be a trap, isn't it? The warrior's damage is increased by 1% for every 2% wounds lost. Uh, that's a nasty pair of gloves. The world trembles beneath my feet. If you're low on hit points, that is. And the guy here on the ground has plus 200% damage. Unfortunately, he cannot use it anymore. There is a glistering gaping wound in the Kevlachid's uh, correct armor. The Xenos uh, was not just killed, his inside was turned into paste like a slowly, uh, like it was slowly eviscerating. I tread a path unexplored. The convulsing Xenos, uh, as, so here, here is one on the ground that seems to be still alive. The convulsing Xenos is dressed in a wreathing tempest armor that has been pierced by weapons in several places. The dying warrior raises his head and stares at you. Uh, he sees Mara's eye and opens his uh, mouth wide. You, you, the bloodied uh, face twists in a grimace of disgust refuse of the arena Agony. what a pleasure Marasai's movements are swift and precise making the dying drukari gurgles fall silent forever the Gracon, uh, dracon pensively wipes the blood of his blood, uh, blade they must have uh, taught to worship me anew What's happening on the planet? Carnage. Killing enemies or each other does not matter. They suffer as I have suffered, driven insane by the voice of Slanesh. In real space, <coughs> can only be drowned by wi the whistling blade and moans of the dying. I have been fighting for a long time. A heavy ordeal for a Drukari. Protracted battles in real space require particular dedication and ferocity. Marasai gazes around the battlefield with a look of confusion. Hmm, strange. What is strange? You cannot see it, Saiken, but the very battlefield is strange. Clashes between cabals are different from raids on monkey worlds. I can draw attack ve uh, vectors in my head as much as I want, picture the squad location so and so, but it does not make sense, nothing about this makes sense. The Xenos flexes his fingers in obvious irritation. Hmm, do we let him die here or not? Why isn't healing him not an option? Okay, he died Embrace anyways. True power.
Marazai seems to be very eager for us uh, to do anything, and there are cameras. Intriguing. As well as plenty of Cabal. Sislith. And Sinistora. The Drukari f uh, look foreign against the background of the gorge. Long black figures that bra uh, bradish their weapons when you approach. Angry whisper runs through the ranks of the Xenos. It seems they can barely restrain themselves from lunging at you. Excellent. I expected nothing else. Do you hear how much anger my mere appearance provokes? Oh, how I will cherish this law. Arko Nazarakai. You know the Xenos in the split golden mask. The figure who presents uh, over your fake inquisitorial trial emerges from the haze of the anguished memory shrouded in a parasite induced gloom Nazarakai Archon of the Black Heart in the flesh what a surprise Marasai's voice is deliberately calm but you catch a note of genuine surprise even amazement this is the last thing he was expecting Early it almost recalls Ananara Sakai's gaze, either out of fear or disgust. I remember him. I was so eager. Uh, I, it was to him that I answered in the trial of the Komara. She trails off and grimaces in anger. You came, foolish whelp, says uh, uh, the Archon. The mere sound of the Nazarazayev's voice gives you an itchy feeling in your head where the brain-eating maggot was once nested. Ariel was not lying when he claimed you would be stupid enough or brazen enough to show yourself in the reaving tempest again, or rather before the new rings of the Black Heart. Uh, nods towards the female Drukari next to him. Who's that? Sinistora, the last succubus from the cult of the fatal uh, thirst that ruled uh, the arena. It was she who suggested I join the bloodstained uh, prosatellites instead of decorating her chambers with my innards. My rebellious toy, is, says Sinistora. Her voice rings with every imaginable shade of cruelty. Do you not honestly think your ridiculous escape from the cults that had uh, graces, graciously given you refuge would be forgiven, did you? Um, what are all of these leaders doing here? Indeed, Narazai. What are the great Archon and his pet succubus doing here? Archon Narazai is no hurry to reply, running a finger along the edge of his blade, gazing intently at uh, Marazai. I have come to teach you a lesson, well, to make an example out of you in the presence of the rest of the wretched Kebal. To make an example, uh, oh, which uh, in the Black Heart has graciously accepted into its rank. There is something familiar about Narazai's face and movement until you understand what uh, you have seen, the same uh, lurching gesture and the same twitching in Marazai after he uh, withered and was driven insane by the unceasing whisper of the warp. It seems the Archon has spent too long in real space. So, at the end, it was a trap after all. By the stars, the Drukari are so predictable. Marazai shrugs, clearly mimicking the human gestures, so neither of us had any doubt about what was going to happen here. New monkeys, masters, does not even let you speak without permission, whelp. <laughs> you are pathetic, Marazai. Perhaps you should think about your impeding doom as deliverance. Shinestora, the succubus next to uh, Narazai, looks at you. The Aishirash uh, betrayed and offered their cabal. One of the weakness and irrevents, um, the other by his pathetic performance in the Obsidian Cold. In the alliance with the monkey, to call oneself the Reaving Tempest these days is to be dishonored. Its former members may pass into death or servitude to a different master. Arkonara Zai granted his favor to the scum who once served the Aisuriash. 
I gave them the privilege of joining the Black Heart, the greatest cabal of glorious Comorak. But only if they trekked down and brought you back as the last surviving member of the former Archon's line, the last living I Sirash. Your former warriors have been do uh, have done their part, though not without assistance from the witches of the fatal thirst. But that is no reason to deny them credit. Marzai's face is a complex mask of emotions, rage, astonishment, and realization. He begins to speak his voice usually as a hoarse and quiet. The words meant only for Narazai's ears. You were not planning to overthrow Iremeres. You did not plan to make me a new Archon of the Reaving Tempest. From the beginning, you only wanted to destroy my cabal. The Reaving Tempest, such a grand name for a pile of rubbish led by a haunty bitch. The sniveling wretch thought she could bend the laws of the Comorak to extract the Cabal from the protection of the Black Heart. No one rejects our favor without consequences. I had just begun planning raids on the Spire. When who should come to me? You. The Cabal struck on, who longed to regain the favor of the Black Heart. You asked for an alliance to bolster the loyalty of the Reaving Tempest. You pledged your allegiance. I confess for a moment I was entertained, entertaining the thought of installing you as an Archon, but that moment melted at the thought of you tearing the uh, Reaving Tempest apart from the inside without having to lift a finger. Marazai answers, you were the one to suggest holding a fake trial for Imereres. No matter the outcome, you promised to condemn her in the name of the Black Heart. Your voice being second only to the usher Drubal Vect himself. You let me set the stage uh, with my own hand. And then you delivered the verdict, stripping the Reaving Tempest of its Dracon and showing the others that the Cabal had made a mistake and grown weak. Uh, Abelard, you correctly understand that one Xenos gang devoured another Xenos gang just to indulge <coughs> the manacled whims of a Xenos ringleader? All right. <coughs> <coughs> what about Nocturne of Oblivion? What part did he play? Narazai gives you an exatrespid look, um, but does not deign to replay. He does not know Saiken, the great Archon of the Black Heart, does not have the slightest idea what the Arabinian was doing at his little trial. You forget yourself, well. For a brief moment, a spark of rage surfaces from under Narazai Kai's mask of arrogant tranquility. So, everything was doomed from the beginning. The outcome was known before the story began. One Azurirash brought the wrath of the Black Heart upon, upon her cabal. The other became the first pillar to fall at my command, and now the remnants of the Cabalites, still loyal to Vect, will push an end to the history of the departed Cabal. They brought me to you, and they will drag you back to the Comorak in chains. Uh, Karyal, um, whose voice is the vow of any emotion, the Azuriash um, have lost the right to be considered the first among us. If the Black Heart uh, wills it, we will destroy those who have dishonored the Cabal. Hmm. Marazai pierces Karel with uh, his gaze before shifting back to Narasakai. Then why did you serve me so well by bringing my sworn enemy here, Karel? Both he and the remains of the Reaving Tempest will be mine. Marzai slaps his soul hang, um, hanging from his belt and laughs decisively, and I will forever listen to your agony. Narasakai says, kill them, kill 
everyone except the well. I need him and your kind. Has no and so it begins. And so it begins. Good, let's see. We got a lot of enemies here. Gosh, the Prime Party would mince uh, these guys so absolutely well. Imagine Cassia with her littlest stare hitting like every single one of them. Ooh, the joy. All right, Avalard. Iliad <coughs> goes to here. Saiken there. Adira here. And Marazai is the main protagonist. He's fast, so we don't need to. Uh, we don't need to expose him too much. Oh boy, this is going to be very gutsy of us to do this here. Good, given that Marazai is uh, the real deal. And conquer. How about this Beckons. and that? Destiny reshaped. Good. This better works, man. What do we have as uh, big uh, grenades? Well, we're going to find out uh, about the grenades in a second. <coughs> Let's start here. Open this guy. Matter of fact, I think we should hit both of you. How do we get an immediate counterattack? Dang you, Xenos. It is a perfect killing sight. I am not a vessel for pain. I am its master. Okay. Couple of extra hit points. You call this a strike. got more over here. All right, well, this is going to hurt. What? Um It would be beneath me to even attempt it. All right, let's continue with Mara's eye. Do an opening here. Hmm, not good. That's Perry and Perry. Couple of good strikes, but Marazai needs healing badly. 
and we shall deliver. I know Amasek would be better. Better than nothing. Good, a little bit uh, of that for Saiken. And <coughs> we got a couple of problems up there. Should really get Iriliad into position. A moving target lives longer. Okay, these guys. They are trouble. Hmm, how do we uh, go about it? How do we go about it? Can't. Well, I can do that theoretically. You've got a problem? I've got a price. Uh, it doesn't really change the outcome too much, unfortunately. Good, a couple of kills, jaded uh, well overall. I need no guidance. Okay, this is easy, a bit of healing. Marasai is uh, healed, back up. And this could be a start. These guys might immediately die, which I would really appreciate. Why? Why is Marazai down? Oh, come on. Iridia tries to help herself. Anything else? On it. But of course. Was was that you? Or anything else? Gives herself extra damage. Okay, that looks about right. Purpose Moving into cover. Me. Well, that would not be bad. I think we can work with that. I will. All right, let's try this here. 2,900 points of damage. Mortals. 
The Archon is severely injured and a lot of the spillover damage almost killed them. Uh, it's early, it's time to shine. A couple of traps. I understand your intent. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. The, uh, the guys and gals next to me are dead. Which brings us to... Saiken attacking the back line. Which I think we can do. If we're standing here, we even have cover. Um... Oh, okay. Uh, there is still a Xenos down there. I can help Jay. That would be fine. Um, if we're moving to here, we can still attack the back line, and that's uh, what it's all about. Um, let's do that. Guidance. Two down. I will Jay gets a couple of buffs. Purpose guides me. She can act herself. One. Am I getting two. paid for this? Three, four, and earlier it gets uh, the ultimate, and can now hit for six hundred. If I am ancestors, guide me. I'll tear your heart out for this. you moving. No more. All right, uh, let's just continue our onslaught here. If it serves your cause, favors the sweat. That is fantastic. Penetrating shots are so good if you have over penetration. If I must, favors the sweat. Earlier it is uh, dealing so much damage. I'm very happy with her build. Marasai is uh, uh, give and take. He's not tanky enough to really do what he's supposed to do. Good, we're putting a follow on uh, this guy. Good, Jay. Can hit him. We might give it a try. Don't get too cocky. Oh, you're not <laughs> Thanks to uh, to our own stacks, that was good. Press the advantage. Uh, 
By the way, crazy just how many movement points we have. I don't know what spirals so out of control, but it's crazy. Narazai is dead, Sinosaura is dead, all of these cowards are psychophants are dead, every little last one of them. Does that mean there is no one left to threaten you? Mandrakes, Narakasai's followers, the remains of the Revving Tempest? No, I'm still in danger, but uh, will they risk hunting me? A Drukhari who lives in real space and has destroyed all of his enemies? I doubt it. Do you regret what's happened to them? no need of spineless disloyal scum who were tested by circumstance and found wanting. The ones who came down to me, I have ground to dust. What else is there to regret? I will find purpose for myself. I will find whoever is pursuing me. Even if that means tracking them here and not in the webway. Good, got some normal Cabalite armor. That's barely a match for us. What is this here? Drukhari Clave. Not really a match for us as well. Whenever the warrior dodges an enemy's ranged attack, they immediately perform a single attack with an equipped melee weapon on a random adjacent enemy. Hmm. The question is, One what uh, kind seek. of uh, do you have? Ishiroik increases. I think this is better. Mental of heroism, that's just straight up good dodge. Blast pistol. Uh, that might be interesting for Jay. You love to take charge, don't Let's you? take a look at the pistol. Got a plasma pistol, which is uh, just as strong. I like the dodge reduction 30% on this one, which isn't bad. But I also like the uh, Marzian bolt pistol because uh, the pistol burst is really really good nah I think we're good although it is 80% armor penetration that's not bad either it's a melter weapon massive dodge reduction she uh, has a problem with enemies dodging her all right, so Let's seize maybe that's the opportunity. maybe that's a good weapon for her. We're going to find out. Got to be a bit careful. Psych and almost soloed that encounter. I need to put him a bit on a leash. But I noticed this Marasai did not. My feet. He would have needed to be buffed a bit more uh, to really make it uh, worthwhile. He unfortunately did not manage to get going uh, with uh, all of his buffs. Earlier, in a in a way, is easier to pull off because she's just sitting back, and uh, once you like fully buff her, she goes rat -tat -tat -tat, and uh, all of the enemies are effectively down. With Barazai, it is more difficult, mainly. Because he needs to go into melee, there are counterattacks, parries, follow-throughs, as you have seen. Once he lo um, once he moved out of uh, the enemy's uh, direct space, uh, they were attacking him, and every single hit already cost him like half of his hit points. So, not the biggest fan of how that worked out. Um, I'm, maybe I've. I've built him incorrectly, but then again, I'm not sure what I could have done. I already specced into a couple of defensive talents after all of the main offensive ones uh, were there. 
but he still takes a lot of damage. Neos Charo, uh, Charotius. Couple of unknown ships. Okay, unexplored system lit by the nameless star. <coughs> we need uh, to go to Epitaph, and I have no idea what, where Epitaph is, but we're going to find out. It's not here. Under the thick clouds, uh, as if shredded by careless blade, sway vast steps and carpeted by the pale gold deadwoods. The rogue trader's attentive eye distinguishes a region amongst uh, the endless uh, grasses that does not fit into the landscape. The scouts from the subtle shuttle see <coughs> signs of intelligent life. Judging by the trampled uh, soil and tent frames, someone made camp here. Distant silhouettes from a tangle path and obstacles, a maze. The outer walls are supplemented by a multitude of spikes and blades decorated in scraps of leather and um, withered crucified prisoners. Uh, <coughs> it does not take an expert in xenoculture to reason that the Rukari have been here. Mm. As the uh, uh, scouts come over the tracks left by the Drukhari structures, the scouts find themselves uh, mm, uh, items of Imperium make. A blood so close, a quiller patch, data slate cracked in half, gothic letters, the symbol of the uh, Inquisition are frozen on the bottom half. The sentence fragment made up for part of a re um, exploration report. The servants of Van Valencius find a rough illustration of a camp in the pocket of a filthy coat um, on it mark two locations the first is shown with a sword and highlighted area where the items were found the other is a skull and points to a patch of uh, ground by the maze uh, the scouts carefully inspect every piece of land that is marked and discover a camouflaged pit uh, studded with strong thick needles in a niche sunk into the wall of the trap glittered Volumeric uh, flask with ugly creatures that look like several brains struck together. The rogue traders' people recognize these grotesque figures as Drukhari uh, Druka Medusae, a parasite capable of registering emotions and transferring them to its masters. Um, this thing was uh, left here as an equivalent of a picked recorder detecting the suffering of the Drukhari victim. So let's destroy that. Um, the flask explodes into shrapnels um, under a salvo of scout rifles. The remaining liquid is collected into several test tubes uh, to be examined by the ship's laboratory. Let's continue to explore. Deep prints belong to the landing legs and, uh, and a ladder is visible in the grass behind the maze. A relative position of the recesses correspond with the design of an imperial shuttle. When the Van Valencia scouts approach, they find a wax seal bearing the symbol of the Inquisition and a monogram formed with the letters XC, that's Xavier, and the voice of the pros, uh, proposition that initials the correspondence of the name of Lord Inquisitor Xavier Caltasar. We found objects, um, segment of the dry grass. Um, a few meters in front of the prints from the letter has been cut um, as if it was scythed. Among the chopped stems lies a piece of Drukhari trophy, a flap of a dark-skinned stretch out by chains. Mm. That's an interesting... Uh, that's an interesting weapon. Okay, that was a slight upgrade for Marasai. <coughs> I think, given how uh, deep we are into this episode, this is a good point uh, to stop and continue the next time. Uh, if you want to sharpen your blade, try to slice the like button and see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.